welcome to Meet the Gaffer. I'm Alan Steinheimer. Today we're going to take a look at some uh, larger electrical distribution and cable, including some boxes, connectors, uh, and so on. Uh, we have a generator here to talk about and show off as well. And uh, later we'll talk about uh, some of the actual instruments. But I wanted to start first with more of the sort of strategy and philosophy of distribution. I think of it like a chess game. You want to anticipate uh, what's going to happen in the future. So as I lay out electrical distribution on any given set, I have in the back of my mind a list of all the lights that are on the truck that day, what I might want to use. If I'm the best boy, I've already talked to the gaffer or the DP about what lights might go where, but I'm still thinking, as, as we all know in the film business, everything changes. And so you may start out with a certain plan and it may segue and just totally change into something else. Plus, you also have the fact that at sometimes you're shooting during daytime, the shoot goes long, you're now into nights, you want it to look like daytime, now you take your biggest light, you put it outside, and you're trying to recreate the daylight that you've been shooting in all day. So there's all sorts of unanticipated problems that you're trying to think about in advance and when you run the distro, you want to run it such that you can change things and uh, move things around. One thing I like to think about uh, as I plan out the electrical is what are my instruments and how big do I need to size the actual cable and the actual distribution? So if I am on a shoot with a bunch of LEDs, it's entirely possible almost none of this is necessary if we're inside a house and the lights can plug into the wall. Um, I, th these light, this distribution is really intended for larger lights for the most part or a, a situation where there isn't much power, like in a warehouse where there might be almost no power. Basically there's lights overhead uh, and they might have an outlet by some little uh, shipping station and that's it. There might not be anything else in that warehouse, in which case you need to lay out some distribution there. Well, let's talk about some more uh, details. We'll start with where is your power coming from? So uh, one thing would be on location and using a generator. This is a 500 amp generator uh, on a, as a tow plant, uh, double axle. And you can see here, there's some cam locks out uh, both sides. And uh, I think uh, my colleague Dave Mong has already talked about single phase and three phase, but uh, that's a crucial uh, decision you need to make before you start out. Three phase gives you three hot legs coming out of a generator. Single phase gives you two hot legs with a slightly higher voltage. Uh, what happens is your banded can be either four wire for single phase or five wire for three phase. The five wire almost exceeds what is comfortable to carry. There's a lot of reasons to use uh, the single phase cable, the four wire, because it's just easier to manipulate. Um, and then there's distro boxes. Uh, so this is a 400 amp uh, single phase box. And as you can see, there's a blue and a red. Uh, there is no black, uh, a white, and a ground. And so basically you get two hot legs into this box. If you look at a 1200 box here, you'll see that they've added the black leg. Um, and they've given you more outs, they've given you, uh, it's just a larger box altogether intended for, you know, more possibilities and on the back side is some 220. There's also a 600 box, which is basically designed for three phase. And that again uh, has six 100s outs, a little simpler than this, has no 220. So here I have a little bit of an oddball. It's a 220 box. Uh, you see three 220 outs on the, on the uh, face there. This side you see the three hots, black, blue, red, uh, white, neutral, and green ground. Um, all 220 in the world of video production is basically made by having two hot legs. So it's not one leg with 220. It's actually two hot legs and one ground. There's no neutral. Uh, so in a box like this, uh, I cannot run uh, like a t 10K uh, because there is no 100 amp out. 220 is indicated by the yellow. So here's another larger 220 cable. Again, we've got it coated yellow. The pin configuration is a little bit different than the uh, 100 amp. So these are not interchangeable and you won't be able to stick this in the wrong uh, outlet. These are each 50 feet. 
Here's a piece of 60 amp. It's a little bit smaller. Um, it's funny, these are just giant plugs, basically. You can see there's a lot more copper, so it can take the amperage and not get hot, hopefully. Uh, what you will find over time is if you uh, own this stuff and one little screw gets loose, uh, these things will tend to melt down and give you a little bit of biofeedback that uh, you gotta maintain your equipment better. Um, this is two watt here. It's darn heavy. One guy doesn't want to really lug this too far. As you can see, I've got it on a cart. Uh, the same with the banded. Uh, when you get into the heavy cable, you want some wheels. Um, to economize both money and also weight-wise, um, my ground is a lighter weight cable. You'll see that occasionally, sometimes on the uh, banded as well. Uh, you can usually downsize one grade on the, on the ground. These are three furs. This is a ground three fur. You can see that it's actually reversed. Uh, the idea is that you cannot plug it into the wrong place uh, by having all the grounds reversed. There happens to be a Bay Area convention. Uh, there may be other places as well. You may not always see it that way. Uh, this is a hard three fur. This is a soft three fur. The idea of the hard one uh, is that you can stick it in a cable that's just running along the ground. The soft three furs work a little bit better when you're coming up to a box like this and you can get the three fur away from the box. It gets really crowded with these things going into these boxes. So I tend to, when I'm coming out of a larger distro, I usually order some three fur, soft three furs as well. So when we talk about two aught versus banded, what do we mean? This is a single conductor. It can carry, 2 watt can carry 200, 225 amps. That's just one solid, it's not really solid, it's stranded, but one piece of copper inside. When you look at banded, it's actually got cable that is literally banded together. This is five wire banded. You can see the black. Black is always, generally in the world of video, the last leg added. Otherwise, it's blue and red if it's single phase. We also have some little smaller things. This is a, a 100 amp splitter to goes to 260s. Um, it's basically like a giant cube tap. Um, and this is called a snake bite. This goes to 100 amp. So you can actually come out of one of these boxes or a piece of cable and get out in a 100 amp. This is the non-fuse type. They also make these a little longer where they actually have a fuse in the actual uh, connector. Never really caught on and, and then if it pops you're really in trouble because you probably don't have any backups on the truck. So people generally aren't using it. Theoretically, if you want to be super code, you want everything on 100 amp stuff coming out of a box like this or this because it's all breakered. So you have some protection. Lastly, smaller distro, this is a 60 amp. You can see you have a 60 amp connector here. You have, so I can hold 60 amps. You see you have three 20 amp duplexes. Each one's on its own little breaker, which is lighted, which helps. Um, and I used to use this a lot, but as, as I progress through the business, 100 amp sort of displaced 60 amp in the world of large distro and you can see on these boxes uh, there is no uh, 60 amp out. People just decided you know what we're going to go for the slightly larger cable that carries a lot more and so this is a 100 amp lunch box. This is a total industry standard and if you go to a Hollywood set it has an in and an out uh, you will see a lot of these. Uh, everywhere. Uh, and this is called, it's a flow through, meaning that you can run cable inside in one end and out the other. Uh, five 20 amp breakers, five 20 amp duplexes. Uh, this is a workhorse of the industry. So we're going to start uh, actually doing a little layout, uh, but we've got a limited budget here, so it'll be a pretty small set as you'll see. Uh, we're going to start with a 500 amp Jenny. I've got it set up for three phase. I'm going to cable out of here and I'm going to cable the set. So let's go look at the set. 
This will be the window. Okay, here we have a set. Uh, our limited budget uh, casting director cast Barbie and Ken. So here's our room. We have two windows, two doorways, and uh, now I'm going to run some distribution. First, I'm going to grab some five wire banded. I'm going to look at which end is the male end always goes towards power. I do the ground first, then the neutral, and then the order on the uh, rest of the power doesn't really matter. And it's not a bad idea to do a little strain relief if you can. And now walk our banded out. General rule of thumb is you don't want to leave banded in a circle. The convention is to figure eight it. Theoretically it will heat up if it's in a circle. So uh, there's one thing wrong with this picture, of course, the generator's inside the building. You would never do that on an actual set. Generator would obviously have access. It's spewing exhaust just like a car does. Uh, you'd kill everyone inside the building if you left it inside and ran it. So generators are always outside. For today's demo purposes, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to grab a 600 box and I'm going to insert it at the end of our banded run. Again, mail to power, and once again, ground first. It's okay to tip the boxes on the side to get stuff in. It's a little easier. A lot of times, I'll just tip the box up on its side. Now I'm grabbing the soft reefers. Once again, ground first. Those cam locks can be pretty tight. Always good to be uh, wearing gloves. Also just electrical, it's one more layer of insulation. At this point, I'm gonna go grab my amp probe and I'm gonna actually meter the box. Be back in a sec. If you're running heavy electrical, you definitely want something like this, a very portable amp probe. And I'm gonna put it on voltage. And I'm going to test to make sure that I've actually got everything wired up correctly. And it looks good. You can see if your ground's good. You can test. So that was black leg, blue leg, red leg. Once I've got my main distro up like this, I'm tempted to start the generator up. I first off want to make sure that the you know thing's actually working. Um, and the other distribution that runs after banded's a little bit safer. It's the plugs that basically have all three wires built into the plug. Banded, a little bit more dangerous just because a lot of exposed copper. So I typically run two aught, four aught if needed, banded to distro boxes, and then I'll start powering everything up. Also, uh, everyone's waiting for you at that point, generally. So you need to get up and running as quick as you can. Okay, a few more parts. I'm going to run some 100 amp outside. I've got the uh, three first standing by. If I've got something heavy, But let's imagine now that we're thinking, oh, we're probably going to use a big light outside or maybe it's going to turn to, to night and then we're going to want a big light to simulate daytime. So I'm going to run some additional power. Okay, we've got 220 power outside. I can uh, potentially bring in a big light like a M90, T12, 18K, something like that, and come through the window now. So you can see the uh, graphical idea of ringing the set. Basically, you want to have set in the room you're shooting in, you want to have uh, power outside. 
Uh, because we were dealing with Barbie size set, we sort of ran small power initially with the 100 amp boxes. You, in a real situation, you might be running banded and uh, more 220 for bigger lights outside. Although, if you are using M18s outside the windows, then the uh, first run of the 100 amp boxes would have been uh, sufficient. So I'm trying to do just enough that I can cover everything for, the, for at least the first hour or two, maybe longer, and hopefully for the whole day. Um, you don't have to lay out the entire system at that first setup. You want to do enough that you're basically got power for all your lights that you're going to use for that first setup, and then you can work behind the scenes as you go for the rest of it. Uh, that's pretty much um, you know uh, the general concept of uh, running distro on a set. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.